back, fellas. All right, the next portion of this we're going to go over with you is reducers. A reducer is used when we're going to drop down or upsize the pipe size, right? So this one here, it's a two by one, we'll run along two inch pipe, we're going to drop down to one inch pipe, okay? This is a six by two, six inch pipe coming in, two inch pipe leaving. Reducers, very, very common. Any blue book is going to have the dimensions for reducers, but there's a few things we really want to show you so you can pay attention to when you're laying out your piping because it is critical. It'll put you in mind if you don't know about it. The reducers we're going to show you today are butt weld reducers. They do make uh, bushings and socket weld and um, different styles, but these are the most common. These are the ones that we're going to show you. So there's two types of reducers. This is a concentric reducer and that's where both sides tip in and then we have a, an eccentric reducer okay you can see this is flat on one side and the reducing part takes place on the other side of the fitting okay that's an eccentric a good buddy of mine Jimmy Dick told me once uh, the devil's in the details and the devil is in the details this is one of the details that you're definitely going to need to remember when you're laying out your piping. When both sides fold in, that's a concentric. The way you remember that is it's a cone, a cone-centric. And the only other type of reducer is the eccentric reducer. All right, so we got a, a concentric reducer and an eccentric reducer. Okay, the big changes, the big difference between these is the center line changes. The center line does not change on a concentric reducer. It stays the same. On an eccentric reducer, because we have a flat side, and we're only coming in on one, one side of the fitting, the center line changes. Here it's the same, this side, the eccentric, they're different. And that's one thing that you gotta really pay attention to when you're laying out, that your center line is gonna change. So you're running horizontally, and you gotta hit some flange, and if they've got an engineer's got a reducer in there, it's gonna change your center line, you have to account for it. I'm gonna draw you a little diagram of how that works. Devil's in the details on these reducers. So you can see, let's say that's a four by two reducer. Center line, there is no change. So if we were to come out here and have a flange on there, this center line is not gonna change. One thing to be really aware of when you're putting together concentric reducers um, is your hanger heights. If you take a laser, and you shoot a hanger in that's gonna support this pipe right here, you use your laser and you swing over and you set another hanger, that pipe's not gonna sit flat on there. So on concentric reducers, your hangers are gonna change or your pipe supports. That's one thing that you, that's a detail that you need to be aware of when you're setting hangers and there's a reducer in there, bottom of the pipe isn't gonna is not going to match up. All right, this is an eccentric, and you can see, let's say this is a four by two eccentric producer. Our center lines are not the same. The reason you would use an eccentric producer, let's say the product in this line has air in it and the engineer's trying to release the air. And the air floats to the top of the pipe and he wants to be able to push it out on the top. The other reason they would use an eccentric reducer is for a drain line.
No devil in that detail right there. Got a C minus for my drawing skills here. All right, so an eccentric reducer, this is flipped the other way. So let's say the engineer is trying to get the water to drain out of this, or the product or whatever's in there to drain out. Well, now our flow lines all match up, okay? Keep in mind, our center lines are not matched up. Flow line does. You go to put pipe supports or hangers in for this, you can swing your laser over 20 feet down the line and it'll still match up, okay? When you're setting your pipe supports because the flow line in the bottom of the pipe is gonna match up, it's gonna be the same. All right, so many of you are probably asking at this point, how do you find the difference between the center lines on an eccentric producer? I'm gonna show you. All right, so you measure the outside diameter of the pipe. In this case, it's four and a half inches because we're working with a six by four reducer. Measure this side six and five eighths. Okay, so the four inch OD, which is outside diameter, is four and a half inches. The OD of this six inch outside diameter, the OD, anytime you're putting in pipe, the outside diameter of the pipe, it must be bigger than the inside diameter of the pipe. Otherwise, the pipe will be inside out. Keep that in mind. So the OD of this six inch is six and five eighths. Subtract that side from this side, that's gonna give your center line change. A six by four eccentric reducer, we're gonna have two and an eighth inches of center line movement, of center line change. All right, one of the other ways that you can do this without doing that math problem on the board we just did is you can set up a, a square on your fab table, but your fab table has to be flat and square, which mine is. Um, and you can just take a square and run it, butt it up against the pipe, and you can just measure the difference, okay? It's two and an eight. Just the same as what we come up with on the board there. This is an eccentric reducer. We talked about a concentric reducer. The, the hanger's not lining up. And some of you are probably wondering how to find the difference between bottoms or sides of pipe on a concentric reducer. So it's essentially the same thing. You just gotta split it in half. Let's, let's do that. Okay, this is a concentric reducer, and basically what we're, what we're trying to find is this dimension right here. Well, you could do the same exact math problem as we did on the eccentric reducer. We, we take the OD of the six inch side, which was six and five eighths, and you can minus the OD from the four inch side. And the OD of four inch pipe was four and a half. So we do the same thing, but now we have to take this and we have to divide it by two because we give one half of it over here and one half of it over here because it's a concentric. So it would be an inch and a sixteenth of side of pipe to side of pipe change. So if you were planning that out for your hangers, you needed to know how much to go up or go down for your hangers. That's how you would figure that out. Okay, so the same thing on a six by four. This is a six by four concentric reducer. We put the square on the fab table. Measure. There you are inch and a sixteenth, exactly half of two and an eighth. All right, folks, that's a wrap. We went over uh, 45s, we went over reducers, and we went over T's, standard T's, reducing T's. On the next video, 
we're gonna go over a 45 degree offset, just your standard 45 degree offset. You're definitely not gonna to wanna to miss out on that, so stay tuned for that. Until next time.